all the way to 2010, there's no, your, your, all your premiums were like 805, 805, no drastic change. When I got all the way back to um, one that was in 2010, there was a small like $40 difference that happened in your policy because it was like 7 750 something and it went to the 805 and then everyone after that was 805 thereafter but that difference that you saw around that time frame that was just a statewide rate generation so basically our rates had gone up upon that renewal so it had nothing to do with th this accident because like i said that's one that doesn't even carry a surcharge even if it was considered your fault you know so we know it went it went from 751 dollars all the way to 800 something dollars yeah, it was like a $40 increase. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, so that was, okay, go ahead. Sorry. 750, uh, how many, 750 what? It was, let me go to it so I can tell you the exact figure. That was, let me open it back up. I went through each one of them, and then everyone after that has been consistent at the 7, I mean at the 806, 806, 806. Okay, so let me go back to that one that I'm talking about. I went back too far. Hang on one second. It was actually um, the March of 2010 renewal that was um, 762. Yes. And then the renewal after that, so it was 762. And then the renewal after that was the first one that was 806.90. The 762 was in March of what? That was the renewal of, uh, let me go back up one second. <laughs> it's like one second. Okay, here it is. 762 was the March 9th of 2010 renewal. Okay, March 9th, 2010. 10. Okay. Your premium on that renewal was 762. Uh huh. And then your very next renewal after that is where the only time that there was like a bigger difference in your policy, and that's what brought it to the 806. And I looked at the reason for the increase in that one renewal is we had a rate increase within that time frame. But any time after that, your rate has been consistently at the eight something after that. Okay, so, so around that time of the year, you know, our overall cost to insure changed and that's why you're seeing that 40 something dollar difference in your policy premium. Okay, the so $806, uh, according to what you're say, say, seeing, uh -huh. uh, was the what renewal? March, uh, March that was what? was September, um, September of 2010, because the first one was March, that was the seven something, um, and then this one, the next one after that was the September of 2010 renewal. And the next one after that was? And the next one after that was the March of 11. Okay, March 11, 2000 and? Uh, 2011. 11. Okay, renewal, and the, uh, the March 11, 2011, how much was it? Sure, give me one second. Okay, one second here. Okay. So the March 11th, uh, but March 9th of 2011, the renewal was 903. 903. And that was due to what? Let me take a look at that one because I only looked at the 2010 one. Mm -hmm. so let me check that one. Hang on just a moment, okay? Mm -hmm.
thank you so much for holding for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I took a look a little further into that renewal. So it was in regards to the difference that you were looking at was in regards to your personal injury protection change. But we talked to you then, and you you corrected it. It's where you had to sign the option form to choose one of the lower options for personal injury protection. Yes, because that was when I reported the Galena, a Russian mafia member that was defrauding the USA government uh, in the 2010, and then she sent a male mafia member to rear-end me uh, at a highway uh, when I was coming from her company. The highway yeah, was called Van Wick. That, though, you know? Yes, but the I problem is that somebody went and changed my insurance policy without my knowledge or consent. Then I had to contact GEICO to change it back because I saw that the payments for uh, accidents were very high and I did not recall having that. So I had to contact GEICO and, and change that. So my policy okay. went from $806 in September 2010. To the $900. Uh, when you signed the form, it went back down. But these two what? different things, so I don't want you to confuse this with to, that same to what? lady. It, to what? It's in regards to PIP, personal injury protection. It has yes, nothing to do with I, this accident I know. you're talking about, though. And yes, it has all, everything to do with, with the accident uh, in... Uh, uh, October 18, 2010, because after that accident, it was when when I found out that my policy, my insurance policy, went up uh, to from $806 to $903 because okay. the so insurance about that, we're quote. Talking about a whole can I finish here. my sentence? So go ahead. Because my I'm insurance. I'm to show you that what you're talking about with this woman happened in 2010. Okay. Uh huh. This change that you and I are looking at was two renewals after that. It had nothing to do. It had to do with personal injury protection. Nothing to do with an accident. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Was it? Was when did my insurance went up from uh, eight hundred and six dollars uh, in September two thousand and ten to no. to nine hundred and three dollars in March of two thousand and eleven? after the accident or before the accident? No, it didn't change in 2010 at all. It changed March of 11. Yes, it because of the yes. form. It wasn't about an accident. Is no, it was, it, it, was, it was about the accident because she couldn't change certain things because it would, too, it would be too clear. So she contacted somebody at GEICO, and I know for a fact that GEICO has mafia members yeah. working, working there who have uh, uh, run schemes not to, uh, to defraud me and to steal my money. And after the accident of uh, October 18th, 2010, then coincidentally, of course, my insurance policy went up uh, from $806 to $903 after that accident. Ms. Martinez, I can send you your transactions on that day. It's because of PIP. It has nothing to do with an accident. I know. You have, you have, Let me, you have said okay. that Let me. several times. Okay, let me finish my sentence. After you signed the form, it went right back down to the seven, right back down to the eight hundred dollars. Correct, but I had to so contact was, Geico and uh, do that it? when I did not authorize anybody in Geico to do that to raise it from okay. eight hundred and six dollars to nine hundred and three dollars. Okay, because we needed your signature, so regardless of it, it was corrected right then and there. Yes, it was so corrected. I suppose it's, I suppose if somebody calls me and then say, "Oh, I'm sorry, let me correct it," I'm okay, going to so take it take it back. So it's not. It's going to be corrected. Uh, my mother, who is right here next to me, tells me that you don't let me finish my sentences. Is there a, is there a reason yes. why? No, you can go ahead, but I mean, because you're talking about two different things. That's why I'm just trying to... No, I'm not talking about two different things. I'm talking about the hey, same thing. Ahead. I'm talking Let's about... I'm talking about me reporting Galena, a mafia member who was the president of a fraudulent company that defrauded the USA government with millions of dollars. And after I reported her to the USA government, she disappeared along with her company and the USA government could not process her legally. And after the fact that I reported her, then I have an accident and my uh, premium went up from a 
$806 to $903. And after I reported her, then I was uh, put at fault uh, for the accident that uh, a mafia member that she sent caused when he rear-ended me. And you are saying that it has nothing to do with her. It has everything to do with her. Because before I reported her, my insurance uh, uh, premiums were normal. It went from $762 in March uh, 9, 2010 to an, uh, a renewal on September 9, 2010 uh, to $806, which was much of a difference. And then uh, it would, which wasn't much of a difference. And then after that accident, on all, all, after I reported her, I had an accident and then my premiums went up to uh, $903 from $806, $100, almost $100. Después de eso. Anyways, what I want uh, is to make sure that I get um, the uh, letter of, um, what is it called, let me see, letter of experience uh, with my driving record cleared in the last five years, which uh, it should be there from GEICO as soon as possible. Okay, so that would have been something that the claims guy would have done for you before you got to me. So did he say that he was taking care of that for you? That letter has to come from our claims department. Okay. The one that transferred you to me, did you request that from him? Yes, I did. Okay, so then he's going to get that to you. Okay, and also I wanted to ask you the same thing that I asked him. I have reported several mafia members uh, from a mafia member that was sexually harassing me uh, because I was taking care of Luisa Oyarsun, a chronically uh -huh. ill uh, patient, a United States mm -hmm. citizen, uh, and he was harassing her. After I reported uh, this gentleman that is known by the name of... Um, uh what is what what is that they called uh yonkers um castro's uh, uh person Yon yonkers castro Ariel, yonkers ariel castro the one that uh, sexually harassed uh, three women and had them prisoners in ohio for about 10 years uh, he's called the yonkers Ca uh, ariel castro after I reported him uh, and other Italian members, uh, mafia members like him, then all of a sudden uh, all the uh, uh, claim handlers, handlers uh, at GEICO are Italian. Is there a reason why uh, this is happening? Well, I can assure you that, I mean, I work for GEICO, I'm, you know, that no one deals with mafia with GEICO. You know, GEICO is a huge company. We would definitely not jeopardize our policyholders in those kind of manners. You know, we don't have any kind of mafia connection kind of thing that, you know, that you're mentioning. So, you know, I wouldn't know anything about that. All this, you know, it's not connected to your policy. We don't bring in, you know... You know, when you report things to your to the government, they're not they don't notify your insurance company. So unless you call, you know, unless you 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 tell us about stuff that we don't we don't connect with the government. You know, uh, I understand, sure. but when I report something to the government, the mafia members that has uh, that that have my uh, telephone uh, lines illegally intercepted and follow me everywhere, including Geico's uh, body shop. When I go to report a claim, um, tell uh, uh, Geico employees uh, to defraud me with money because in the last claim that I uh, reported, when a mafia member um, broke my front uh, headlight f of my Toyota Corolla 1995. I reported I was at a place uh, in front of a, a botanic, uh, a place where they say sell plants. He uh, got into his truck, uh, broke my lights, and then went inside uh, the place where I was at a comp computer place on Grand Concourse. And I spoke directly to the person that I was speaking with and then left. Uh, and then when I reported the claim, a person uh, assigned by Geico told me that my car was junk, that Geico was not going to uh, pay for the lights, even though I have full cover and I have had full cover for more than 16 years. 
and that um, go to a junkyard uh, to replace my light because Geico was not going to replace the light even though I have full cover yeah, and, and that was after by the way that was after feature, after uh, an army of mafia members followed me to the 505 West 57th Street uh, New York New York body shop that Geico has there mm -hmm. and I spoke to this um, adjuster, a female adjuster, who gave me a false name because then I found out that that wasn't her name or her identity, and she used a false identity. Well, I, I mean, those are things that you would have to discuss with your, the claims department or the police department. I don't, you know, I mean, I wouldn't be able to discuss anything like that. I don't know anything about any mafia members or anything. Okay. So did you want to speak Fair to the claims department or this? Uh, I put, I sent a, a written uh, statement to Geico regarding this incident, mm -hmm. and I also sent a written statement about uh, the claim that I reported uh, uh, regarding another mafia member that rear-ended me before that incident, because that incident with my front headlight uh, occurred in the, the 10th of March 2014. The other mafia member that rear-ended me uh, on purpose on Tokaho Road in Yonkers, New York um, happened in, in February 7th, uh, 2014, uh, less than 30 days apart. And when I reported that, uh, the adjuster minus um, Mr. Minus P, I call him because I cannot pronounce his last name. Uh, he's Greek, I believe, uh, and he has too many consonants. I I reported this to Mr. Minus P. Uh, he saw my car as the adjuster at 505 West 157th uh, Street in New York, New York. He said, go see a mechanic because I'm, I can only assess the damage on the outside. When I uh, was followed there and he uh, spoke to the mafia members that followed me there, I spoke to uh, a mechanic as he told me and then the claim was for the internal damages for uh, $1,400 uh, $400 and some change. And he told me, even before looking at the uh, estimate from the mechanic that he sent me to, he said, Geico is not going to pay you that. And then after that, he said that Geico was not going to pay uh, to repair my car, my Toyota Corolla, because somebody at the shop that he sent me to told him, uh, an unidentified person according to him, that my car uh, didn't have any damages, that they just created that um, estimate of internal damages to create it and when I went inside the shop the mechanic that uh, estimated the damages showed me the parts that were damaged as a consequence of the said female mafia member that crashed into me on the 7th of February 2007 okay. and you're saying that Geico doesn't have any ties with the mafia that I have reported Right, we don't have any ties with Mafia, but if you want to discuss, because I don't know, you know, everything you're explaining to me, I don't have any information about a claim, so I can get you back to the claims department if you want to discuss that. Oh, yes. Uh, I mean, there's not anything yes. further that I can do. Yes, uh, I already discussed it in writing, okay. and I'm going to continue to discuss it with Geico because I am uh, taking this to the next level. Because if I have been paying uh, insurance premiums for about 17 years, uh, that is not uh, to just pay it. Uh, and I really don't think that uh, it is uh, honest for Geico to have somebody impersonate somebody and to tell me that my car. Uh, is junk and to go to a junkyard to get a light replaced I'd have to get when you a mafia member that, you know, with told you me that. It to me, I can't do anything about that, so I would have to get you to claim. So if you want to hold on a second, I'll do that. I already uh, dealt with the claims department. Now I have okay. to deal with an outside okay, agency the, the that regulates that Geico. That. So like you and I talking about it, we can't even, you know, I can't do anything at all. No, uh, I'm not saying uh, that to you because... Uh, you, I'm saying that you can do something about it. What I'm saying is that you said that Geico doesn't have any ties with Mafia members, and they do because the Mafia members that followed me to see Mr. Minus P, 
I spoke with him and they, then they followed me to the uh, mechanic that estimated the internal damages of my car and then Geico told me that they were not going to pay for the repairs of mm -hmm. the uh, damages to my car and I have been insured with Geico and paying premiums for about 17 years. So do you think that would be fair if this was being ha done to you? Do you think, do, would you find it fair? I mean, I don't, I can't discuss the claim of fair or not. I mean, I don't know anything about the claims process. I'm in service. Uh, you know, I just handle your vehicle, adding vehicles, deleting vehicles. So all this that you're discussing would have to be with the claims department. Okay, great. Thank you so much. You, you're welcome. Thank you.